Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and today we're gonna talk some audiobooks. All right, you guys, so it is January, so that means it's time to do a wrap up of all the books that I read this past quarter. Um, all in 2020, I, I instead of doing a monthly wrap up, I did a quarterly wrap up. I don't know if that'll continue into 2021. Not really sure what I'm going to do in 2021. There's no plans here. We just do it loosey goosey and then that's just what we're gonna keep doing. But if you're here, thank you for joining me and let's get to it. These are all the books that I listened to in Q4. So that means October, November, and December. And yes, these are all audiobooks. I am basically an exclusive audiobook listener. I love to listen to audiobooks while I'm working and I can have something in the background or when I'm cooking or when I'm going for a walk. Um, I, I like to be multitasking in that way. And when I try to sit down and read a book, it just, I, it does, I, have a hard time keeping my attention on it. So this way I can still get through all the reading that I want to get done. In fact, uh, for 2020, I managed to get through 55 books for the whole year, which was not my goal. I had been trying to hit 75, but 55, I'm, you know, that's, that's a lot of books. I'm excited. I'm happy about that. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So these are the books that I listened to October, November, and December of 2020. So in October, I listened to Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. Honestly, this was just, I have been on an Agatha Christie kick all year and I finished the Marple series and so I started to try to get through the Poirot series and this book was fine. You know, I kind of feel like it's, it's definitely one of those like the majority of books are going to be just fine and uh, there's only going to be a few four or five stars out there. So this was fine. I I enjoyed it uh, as much as you can. It's, you know, Agatha Christie's great. Next up was How to Argue with a Racist by Adam Rutherford. He is a statistician and scientist and he, the whole book was talking about um, the genetics of race and how that science has been used against um, people to continue to hold up a uh, white supremacist racist beliefs. And I found it a really interesting read. I would highly recommend uh, listening or giving it a read if you are interested in like the genetic science uh, part of things. Um, I, I feel like the title's a little bit misleading as far as like how to argue with a racist. I think a lot of people in 2020 were looking for real tools on how to have these really difficult conversations with family members and trying to make them understand um, that these are real problems that we still have to face uh, today and tackle head on. And uh, and this book is not going to necessarily give you those tools, but I, I think it's an important read regardless of whether or not the title is a little bit misleading. The next book I listened to was Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is a romance novel that was recommended from a, another booktuber that I watch. Um, I believe her channel is called Bookables. Um, she's a really big romance reader and so I often find books that I wouldn't normally reach for um, on her channel and this was one of them. This is a romance that takes place uh, in a Ren Fair and as somebody who has been to a Renaissance Fair who enjoys going to the Renaissance Fair I was really excited to read this and it was a really it was a good solid romance book. Next up was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is another book that I had been seeing mentioned all over the place on booktube. And finally, another booktuber that I watch regularly mentioned it. Her channel is called The Book Castle. And um, she said that Donna Tartt was one of her favorite authors. And I found that really interesting. I've never read anything from Donna Tartt. Um, so I wanted to read it. And I went into the book thinking it was going to be different than what it was. That doesn't that isn't to say that the book was bad because it certainly wasn't. It just, the whole time I was waiting for like a giant mystery to unfold and that's just not what it was. The main premise of it is is about a group of students at a college. They all are part of this Latin uh, program and what unfolds between them and the dynamics between them. And um, it was 
an interesting take on academia. I definitely enjoyed the book. It's a really long book and it was read by the author, which, you know, is I always find that interesting when that happens. It's always kind of like a hit or miss whether or not an author should actually read their book or not. But I did enjoy it and I now would love to read The Goldfinch. I know it's been raved about for a long time and as it turns out it was given gifted to me um, by my grandmother for Christmas so now I have a perfect reason to read it. Next up is George by Alex Gino. This book is a young adult children like i i wouldn't even call it a young adult i would say it's like a children's book you know meant for like a 10 year old a 13 year old to read it's all about a girl who is struggling with her gender identity um and how to come out to her family as being a girl and i really found this a great way to ha start that conversation with your children whether or not your child is struggling with gender identity but exposing them to these kinds of conversations i feel like we all need to be talking about it a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding about trans people in the trans community and i just i feel like the more we as parents, we as people um, can help our children understand that it's okay to feel differently about yourself. It's complicated enough just being a kid and when you throw gender identity into the mix it becomes even harder for kids to feel like they can open up and talk about those kinds of things. Um, and so I feel like this book is a great way to get that conversation started. Next up is The Truths We Hold by Kamala Harris. I honestly, I didn't know a lot about Kamala before she got the bid for vice president. I knew that she was a senator and that she had been a lawyer and an attorney general. And so I knew like the general basics of her. I knew that she had made headlines for during the Kavanaugh hearings, but I didn't really know a ton about her and her history and her background. And so I found this book really interesting. Um, there's been a lot of criticism about her in the last year and I wanted to understand where that criticism was coming from and why people that felt that way. And honestly, I, I really don't get it. Like I just don't get the criticism. Like I, I, there should be criticism of everybody and everybody should be questioned about what they're doing. But it seems like people are very, very, not just people on the right, but people on the left who are very critical of her and don't trust her. And because of her background as a lawyer and as an attorney general. And I just, I find that really interesting. And I, I was fascinated by her life story and the things that she worked on when she was a lawyer and an attorney general in California and I, I made me more excited about her becoming the first female vice president. It's it's a huge it's about time and it's I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what her and Biden can bring to this country in the next four years. Next up was The Tales of Terror by Edgar Allan Poe. So this was a collection of his short stories. I had read a few of his short stories like in school and afterwards. I've always like enjoyed Poe, but not enough to uh, like sit down and become an avid fan. And I, my husband had recommended that I read one of his short stories. Um, I forget what it's called now, but something about the Red Death or something like that. Um, there were just a lot of parallels with what was happening uh, in 2020 and continuing to happening around the world. And I found it to be a, a very uh, poignant uh, read and would highly recommend anyone who is interested in just seeing how history repeats itself or someone um, in the late 1800s who wrote about a very similar scenario to what is happening right now and what that would look like. Uh, it was it's very much like reading The Handmaid's Tale uh, and, and realizing that we are not that far from this historical piece of literature. So that was all the books I read in October. So next up is November. And the next, the book I, first book I read in November was You Can't Touch My Hair by Phoebe Robinson. 
I was not familiar with Phoebe Robinson until I started reading the book and she is hilarious and I didn't realize that she was the co-creator of Two Dope Queens, which again is not something, it's been on my radar for a long time. I just, I've, I haven't watched it in the last, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that ever since becoming a mom, I can probably count on my hands how many things I've watched. Um, <laughs> so it's, I, I don't watch a lot of television. I don't watch a lot of movies. And while Two Dope Queens has been on my radar, it, it just, it's not been something I've watched um, I or listened to. And it's definitely something I want to watch and listen to in 2021 because I really enjoyed Phoebe's book. I'm following her on social media now. She's hilarious. And I would totally recommend reading her book. Next up was Blanche on the Lamb by Barbara Neely. This is a book I was also not familiar with. This is uh, the first in a series and I was not familiar with Barbara Neely or this series and I was curious uh, to be reading more books by Black authors, and since I am a big fan of mystery, I definitely thought this book would be way up my alley. I had read some reviews beforehand, and they were very critical of the of the portrayal of the people in this book, and I kind of side-eyed why the reviews, because I kind of got the impression that they were reviews from white people being not okay with how the white people were portrayed in this book. And I mean, just because you don't like the way people are portrayed doesn't mean it's not an accurate portrayal. Just because it's uncomfortable to read doesn't mean it's not an accurate portrayal. And perhaps if you're uncomfortable with it, then that would mean that you would need to uh, hold the mirror up to yourself and see if you're being, something's coming up from you to make you feel that way because when I and this book was very hard to listen to like it was very uncomfortable to see to to hear people talk to this black woman the, the way that she is talked to and treated and the way white people in general uh <laughs> have historically treated black people. It's not never a comfortable thing to listen to or read about. And that, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it's not an accurate portrayal. Doesn't mean it's something we shouldn't continue to be having conversations of. And it shouldn't take away from the merit of the book. And I don't think it does. It is a difficult thing to hear. Like it's, the, Barbara Neely does not hold back. Um, and Blanche is a vessel for her to air all of her frustrations um, about the prejudices that are that are inflicted upon black people. I think it's a very an important read because she's, she, I believe it, she was groundbreaking. She was like the first detective character who was, was black, I believe, a black woman at that. Anyway, it's, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit about this. I feel like I feel like it's it's never a bad thing to diversify your authors so that everyone is having fair representation in your in your reading so that you can get different perspectives to broaden your scope because we cannot understand other people's experiences if we don't know about them. Anyway, I feel like it's a worthy read and I will definitely continue on with the series despite the fact that it's very, it's hard. It's hard to listen to. There is no getting around that, but that doesn't mean it's not something you shouldn't listen to just because it's hard. The next book I listened to was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This was another book that I had seen floating around on booktube that Lucy Foley's other book was was actually the book that I had been seeing and I don't remember what the name is. I have it on hold at the library and I'm just waiting for my, my turn to come up. But um, this one came up, this was available and so I listened to this. This, <laughs> whew, I mean, if you've listened to this book, you know, uh, the characters in this book, man, they, uh, they're not the best people. <laughs> but I, I was engaged in the, with the book the whole time. I'm looking forward to reading the next one. Um, but yeah, the not very likable people in this book. All right, those were the books that I read in November. Next up is December. December was eaten up mainly by Dune. 
I have never read Dune. I've never seen Dune. I have, am interested in seeing Dune. Um, I had no idea that they were making a Dune remake. Hence, again, like I said, I have not seen or watched anything in like three years because I have a child who sucks all the energy out of me. <laughs> And so I don't watch things at the end of the night. But finally, I so I, I listened to Dune. I really, really liked Dune. I wasn't sure if I would. I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of fantasy, but the fantasy genres that I do like, like I really like them. And Dune was good. Even though there are more books in the series, this is definitely one of those books where it can just be a one-off. You could just listen to Dune and we would be totally satisfied. I really enjoyed it from, from beginning to end. The audiobook was a little strange though. I It was interesting choices in how it was produced. The just, just to go off uh, a little bit on specifically just about the audiobook version, um, I was very familiar with a number of the narrators um, that were narrating, and it's not that I had a problem with any of the narrators. There was nothing wrong with any of the narrators. What I had a took issue with was the choices the producers had made to switch back and forth between a main narrator, who was Simon Vance, who just read all of the characters and there was no character voice. like there were no other actors voicing in those chapters versus the chapters where there were actors voicing other characters. And I just, I couldn't come up with the rhyme or reason as to why sometimes a chapter would have two or three actors narrating characters and why other chapters, those same characters would be narrated just by Simon Vance and no other actors. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was a reason. I have a couple of theories as to what those reasons were. Um, I just, it was a little jarring. It took me maybe like two or three hours before I finally wrapped my head around like what the heck was going on, who these people were, because it was confusing when the, sometimes Simon would be narrating and I'm like, is this the same person as Scott Brick's character? Like I, it was just an interesting choice. I finally was okay with, like, once I figured out what was going on, like, it was fine and I didn't really notice anymore. I just thought it was a really weird choice. I, well, whatever. <laughs> but Dune was great. If you have, if you have read Dune, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And super looking forward to finally watching the movie. I've been a Kyle MacLachlan fan and David Lynch fan for a long time. And I, I find it fascinating that David Lynch directed Dune. Like, that's, seems like an odd choice, but really looking forward to seeing it and a young Kyle MacLachlan and, and what he does with Paul's character. And well, it's just, my husband's reading it now. So as soon as he's done reading it, we, we will sit down and watch the movie together. And I'm excited. All right. So to wrap up December, there are two more books. I listened to Hercule Poirot's Christmas Story um, by Agatha Christie. This was really, this was definitely one of the Poirot books that I really enjoyed. It, it had like decent reviews on Goodreads, but I liked it a lot more than other people did, I think. It was a great Christmas book. I actually DNF'd like two or three other books during December that were like Christmas mysteries and I just couldn't get into them. I just couldn't do it. And I, I like gave each of them like, like three, four hours each. And I just, I just couldn't bring myself to continue listening. So I was glad that I finally did find a mystery that I was I was on board with. And then lastly, I finally, finally listened to Anthony Horowitz's Moonflower Murders. I've really enjoyed Anthony Horowitz's other books, uh, Magpie Murders, and uh, what is the name of the other one? Anyway, I've, I've really enjoyed the other books that I've read of his. And so I've, I've had Moonflower Murders on pre-order for the whole year. And when it finally came out, I think it was like in the early fall, it came out. It just sat on my Audible shelf for a long time. Um, so that was a nice way to end the year. Um, I, I did notice that once again, there were some characterizations of um, the LGBTQ community that I... I was not thrilled with and I I've seen that as a pattern in his books and much like 
J.K. Rowling, like, I, I kind of feel like if I don't see a difference in his next book, that I might not be able to continue to support this, like, his writings and stuff, because it's, it, it's, it's not just, like, a one-off thing. It be, it's a pattern. It's a ser it's a pattern. And so, I don't know. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. There was a Goodreads review that spoke specifically about that and I wholeheartedly agreed with everything that review had to say. So yeah, that was disappointing for sure. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see whether or not that happens again in his next book and I might just, despite how much I enjoy his books, it, it it's not enough to continue to support somebody who's going to write such ugliness about the LGBTQ community. So anyway, that's a low note to end on, but that's what it is. So those are all the books that I read in Q4 of 2020. It was a mixed bag for sure. I have decided to set my Goodreads goal for 2021 to 50 and really focus on only books that I really, really want to read instead of feeling all this pressure to get in enough books to, to meet that goal. Because I definitely felt that pressure in 2020 and there were a lot of books that um, I just didn't get around to listening to because I they were big books you know like 20 hour books and I just felt like I couldn't dedicate the time to it and still meet that goal and so I've I've given myself permission to not meet that goal anymore and to just read the things that I want to read and yeah we're off to a great start I've already gotten a couple of books in for January and I hope that you got some inspiration from some of the things that I may have read in the last few months. Um, if you have a favorite book from the last few months, I'd love to hear what it was. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.